Hello and welcome to the Law Lounge. I'm your host, Tom, and I'm here to bestow upon you the knowing of great and wonderful things. It's time for something a little different here today. We here at the Law Lounge are fortunate enough to have an exclusive preview of an upcoming feature film set in the universe of Warhammer 40k and to have a chat with its creator. Just the name of the project is likely to get a lot of fans very, very excited. The title is The Last Church. It's an adaptation of the short story by Graham McNeil and it's being created by Tiber Portugues. By the end of this, if you have any questions you'd like for us to ask Tiber in the future, please leave them in the comments down below. Without further ado, I give you Mr. Tiber Portugues. Good evening from England, Tiber. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Tom. Thank you for uh, having me on your channel today. You're very welcome, uh, very welcome. For, for a bit of background, background for the viewers, uh, we ran into each other on Reddit, didn't we, I think? Yeah, I made a post for uh, just trying to get some feedback on a preview of the film I'm working on. And you got through me and I was excited to uh, do this interview. Mm, absolutely. I, um, well, without me spoiling everything, do you want to give a quick background to what, what the film is? Uh, the, this animated adaptation of The Last Church is a story about uh, a mysterious individual in the 40k universe entering a church in uh not 40k but uh 29k as it yeah. were and he and this priest uh he this mysterious man comes across have a discussion uh what it that is essentially on i guess the <laughs> of religion and mm -hmm. faith uh, in its wider scope and uh, it's more of a exploration of these ideas and a way to learn about these two characters in this limited setting. Mm -hmm. So I um, I understand from from the brief because we've only had a very brief chat about this, haven't we? Um, mm -hmm. I understand that uh, as it's an adaptation of The Last Church by Graham McNeil, which is oh, it was probably about fifteen years old, maybe a bit, maybe around that kind of age. Uh, it's actually a, a quite a short story, but your intention is actually to make it into a, a feature length or almost feature length film, isn't it? Yeah, it's right now with the voice actors lines fully recorded, it's sitting at 75 minutes long, uh, given spacing for flashbacks, dramatic cues and such. Uh, and it, I originally thought that as a, such a short story, it would just be a short, quick 30 minute film, but putting the dialogue out and having it spoken uh, takes considerable time, especially when you try to give it some levity within mm. editing. Mm, absolutely. Okay. I have not watched it yet, as I've said. I've intentionally held off on actually checking this video. I'm really, really excited. Uh, the Last Church is one of my favourite uh, of the short stories ever. It's And to be fair, it's actually one of my favourite stories in all of the Grimdark. So we're going to check it out now, have a watch, and, uh, and then we'll come back and uh, I'll ask you some questions. Sounds good. Uh, I should um, I should preview uh, it in a sense that when we adapted this, we did change some writing and we did take a few elements and mix them up. Mm -hmm. But just to make it transition a bit more smoothly to maybe an audience that doesn't necessarily know what 40K is, mm -hmm. but it's still very faithful to the original. But there are some elements that are a little different. Fantastic. And we, we can absolutely dig into that in a bit. But uh, yeah. Let's watch. <laughs> Welcome to the Church of the Folger Lapis. Do you wish to join us tonight? I don't recognize you. No, I don't expect you would. Nor would I expect us to be anyone 
besides you and I. Well, this is a surprise. My midnight sermons are considered quite popular in these parts. You're sure? Quite. What a shame. I had not thought I'd age so poorly as to scare so many away. <laughs> <laughs> it is rare to find a man like you with a sense of humor. I have found that most of your kind are dour, leaden-hearted men. My kind? Priests. <laughs> then I fear you have only met the wrong kind. Besides, given the times we live in, any servants of the Divine would find it extremely difficult to be of good cheer. Very true. I am Uriah Olothair, last priest of the Church of the Folga Labis. Might I have your name? My name is unimportant. However, you may call me Apocalypse. An unusual name for one who professes a dislike of priests. You are aware of the significance of such a word? I am. It is suiting for tonight, however. And why exactly would that be? What revelations do you search for in my humble church? I seek no revelation. I simply wish to talk to you. I wish to learn what keeps you here when the world is abandoning your beliefs in gods and divinity. I wish to understand why you have yet to turn to the faith of science and reason. Your good health. And yours. This is very good wine. It's old. <laughs> you have a fine appreciation of wine, friend Apocalypsis. My father gave this to me on my 15th birthday, and said I should drink it on my wedding night. And you never married? Never found anyone willing to put up with me. I was a devilish rogue back then. No longer, it would seem. A devilish rogue turned priest. Sounds like quite the tale. It is, but some wounds run deep, and it does no good to reopen them. Fair enough. Friend Apocalypsis, tell me, what did you mean when you said this place was soon to be gone? Exactly what I said. Even in your isolated state, you must have heard of the Emperor and his crusade to stamp out religion and belief in the supernatural. Soon, he and his forces will arrive to tear this place down. I know, but it makes no difference to me. I believe what I believe, and no amount of hectoring from some warmongering despot will sway me. That is an obstinate point of view. It is faith. It would seem I'm not as fickle as you would posit, eh? Faith. The Folga Lapis. So this is a holy stone? It is, yes. Why? Why is it the Folger Lapis? I mean, why is it holy? Was it deposited on the ground by your god? Was a man martyred here? Or did some young girl receive some sort of revelation while praying at its base? Nothing so bland, rest assured, friend Apocalypsis. Thousands of years ago, a local holy man who was blind was walking in the hills hereabouts when a sudden storm came in over the western ocean. He hurried back down to the village below, but it was a long way and the storm broke before he could reach safety. The holy man took shelter from the storm in the lee of this stone, at the height of the storm in the lee of the heavens. When he thought all was lost, he was lifted up and heard the voice of our creator. And so he saw the stone wreathed in a blue fire in which he saw the face of our creator. Did you not say he was blind? Ah, he was blind no longer. The power of our creator cured him of his affliction. He immediately ran back to the village and told the people there of the miracle. And then? Say what you will, but come sunrise, you will leave and not return. This is my intention. I have other matters to attend to, but tonight I have to talk with you. 
My adversarial spirit is not born from any mal-will towards you, Uriah. My malcontent is born from my love for humanity. I would see our species in an age of wonder, without these constant wars and the ignorance that blankets our kind like a plague. I would see us ascend. I would see all of our kind raised to the status of godhood that is worshipped throughout the galaxy. But we are enslaved to the fantastical notions that reside within that book of yours, and all the others like it. That damnable book in your hands is a curse, and I would see you rid of it. You go so far as to mock my holy book too? <laughs> this damnable book provides a code by which I have lived a peaceful life, in which I have built more than I have destroyed, helped more than hurt. My time before this book was nothing but destroying and hurting. Untold thousands more live similar lives thanks to the guidance provided by our willingness to believe in something greater than ourselves. Tell me, Apocalypsis, when we, as a species, find your vision to be a reality, what will become of us? What will unite us? Peace can only be attained through an aspiration or a common enemy. But when that aspiration disappears and we, as a species, are gods without rivals, who will we turn on? will turn on each other, friend Apocalypsis. Your vision will bring only an eternity of war. When gods clash, galaxies burn. So what would you that is, that is seriously, seriously impressive. Thank you. Uh, when we first put out the preview of this, we were all really nervous, uh, that being Aaron Weatherford, Tony Cesar, and I, because we didn't know if people would except a uh, super limited animation style in exchange for getting the you know the the voice actors and the score and stuff mm. but, uh, people seem to be liking it so far so yeah the 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 style is it's really pared back isn't it it's um it's <clears throat> it's a kind of style that that really lets the story tell itself instead of sort of instead of leaning on the animation yeah, that, that was really our intention because when we started working on the project, we knew that, uh, of course, we can't do live action. I don't think anyone's going to let us burn down a church or anything. But uh, then, of course, 3D animation is just so hard to make look good. Mm, mm. Just and when uh, the entire movie's primarily dialogue, how are you going to make lip sync look good that entire time? Yeah. No, it, it, it's really cool. It kind of reminds me, I don't know if you've played it, of uh, Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, I've seen a, a lot of people make that comparison. I haven't yeah. played it, but I did watch a few trailers after I showed off some of this. These people mm. uh, said it was like that. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it, it, the aesthetic is really Darkest Dungeon-esque. It's, it's beautiful. It's um, actually Darkest, it's quite interesting. Darkest Dungeon is the most grim dark thing in the world as well it's it's <laughs> it's incredibly grim dark but uh yeah it's it's yeah it's it's really good it's um i yeah i'd, I'd like to sort of touch on some of the change because you mentioned before you've made changes and um yeah. the the character of uh, apocalypsis so in in the original short story uh, the emperor goes by revelation so could you just sort of walk me through some of the ideas that you've had and why you made some changes? Yeah, uh, I think number one was th this is one of my favorite short stories in the 40k, 30k universe. Mm. And it's, it's been in my head ever since I read it, but uh, I've, I've gone and tried to refute people's points. Because some people criticize it. And when I was adapting this into a screenplay i just kind of went back and people apparently had seen the twist coming a mile away because his name was revelation and uh, even though a majority of 40k fans know this story i wanted to make sure that this was something people i think could enjoy regardless of whether or not they were 40k fans mm -hmm. and apocalypse is revelation in latin which i thought tied nicely into the 40k themes of name everything something in latin yeah all of the faux latin yeah and yeah. uh and i think it speaks 
to the Emperor's uh, wisdom mm -hmm. in the case that he maybe he took the time to educate himself on the language that might be predominantly used in religious texts. Mm -hmm. Well, it, at this point, it, the Emperor is something in, in the order of these about four. So, so the, this, the short story is set at the, roughly at the end of the Unification Wars, isn't it? Yes. On Terra. So at this point, the Emperor's whew, like 40, nearly 40,000 years old himself anyway. So yeah, he is quite the uh, worldly fellow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, the voice acting is phenomenal. Who, uh, do you, are they, uh, have you got sort of, I, 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 I have no idea of budget or anything on it. So you, you said you've got a bunch of voice actors in. So are they, it sounds, the guy voicing the emperor sounds really, really familiar in some way. Uh, so I, when I, when I cast for this, I just put up the website called castingcallclub.com mm -hmm. and I just put up a bunch of lines and I honestly wasn't even necessarily seeking people who knew about this story mm. uh, previous but I don't know I wasn't like you can't know what this story is but uh, I put it up as it was just the story and voice actors came to it and were excited to do it just because they liked the story but mm. uh, the Emperor Apocalypsis is Ty Harper uh, apparently he's done voice acting roles in video games before mm. I, you might have heard his voice I don't know it, it sounds very, very. Uh, the guy sounds familiar. I mean, um, all, oh, just so you know, uh, for the viewers, I'm going to get links for all the social media, for all the anyone you can provide, and it'll all be down in the in the description below. But uh, I, I'm really impressed, and I think I think it's the first time I've heard the Emperor with an American accent. Oh we, yeah, we all That's know he'd be an Englishman. <laughs> That's true. I should have thought of that. Nah, no, I, no, honestly, I think it really, really works. And the um, the, the character design and that, that voice is absolutely incredible. It's beautiful. It's really well done. But, um, yeah, so tell me, how, how did this thing come about? You know, other than you, you said, you said that you were kind of bored and you wanted to tell a story, but how did you go about, well, how did you go from being bored to being here? <laughs> uh... I, I was watching Warhammer 40k fan animations because I was bored, mm. and I realized that a lot of these fan animations have absolutely amazing action. Like recently, a good example is Astartes, mm. but I there was nothing I could go to really just to hear my favorite 40k stories in the form of a film. And I thought, well, I need to something needs to be done about that. So I picked one that was good and started adapting it into a screenplay and I, at the time i didn't really have any any budget for this thing but luckily people liked the story enough in the screenplay version that they were willing to voice act in it that being ty harper and bishbo and then once i had voice actors uh, i saw tony cesar's animations he's done 40k animations before and i thought hey that style is uh his style of animation is perfect for this film so i reached out to him and he was excited to do it and it's just became this rolling ball of people who wanted to work on the project because they liked 40k. That's that's fantastic. So it's it's as every is this is essentially entirely self-funded and voluntary then. Yeah. So the, uh yeah, that's why we're trying to create a Kickstarter at some ah. point, but of course, even if the Kickstarter is not funded, it, it will still be made eventually. Yeah. We'll, we'll still get it done. Uh, it's I, I'm genuinely impressed. So, um, what what are your plans for the Kickstarter then? What what are you what are you looking for? The the Kickstarter predominantly is just to justify. It's it's to it's to allow people just to spend more time working on it. Mm. And I'm not going to take any of the money from it. It's going to the people who, like the animator and the composer, uh, mm. Aaron Weatherford and Tony Cesar, who. What to uh, Tony draws every frame of the character by hand, and Aaron is composing to each scene. He's writing a soundtrack, so they're putting in way more time than I am as the editor. Mm. So the money's going to them just to help keep Ramen in the cabinet, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's um, it's yeah, uh, it's it's an absolutely lofty goal, man. It's it's really impressive. 
And it's, as you say, absolutely, you know, as, well, <laughs> this is such a ridiculously new channel of mine, but um, it, it, it comes from the same kind of uh, angle as you, I suppose, wanting to tell the stories and introduce new people to it because the, the lore is incredibly dense, but if you look for videos, you know, you've, you've obviously got the, the big Warhammer YouTubers, you know, but if you're looking for videos or animation that isn't battles, I, I can't think of anything else quite like this. It's brilliant. But, um, mm. yeah, so, yeah. And just the idea of, you know, getting it funded. I, I, I cannot imagine you'll have any problem at all. But you, just, you, you compare it to a start, like, the, they are, it's a completely different beast to a Astartes. It really is. It's very, very cool. Yeah. And yeah. I, I got to agree with you. I, I think, well, to me personally, the uh, compelling parts are telling the story. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I was excited when I saw your first video on this channel was about, you know, telling the story of who the Astartes were. Mm. Instead of, you know, what they do. Everyone focuses, uh, on on the action yeah 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 absolutely and well as, as the the popularity of the Horus heresy series you know i remember i i actually used to work for games workshop years and years ago and in the early in the early days it was battles you know the the novels were just a series of battles linked with this thin sinew of plot but then sort of eisenhorn and ravenna happened and um, and then you, they launch into the Horus Heresy, and it really, really illustrates the, or just the popularity of that series really illustrates the thirst that people have for these stories, you know, the personalities and the people behind them. Yeah, it's incredibly compelling, especially when you have such a, such a rich universe, and then you pair that with fantastic writers like Graham McNeil that can flush it out, mm. and you have a... It's like a, it's like an incredible cast of characters in just a, and it, a, like the universe was engaging on its own before there were characters and then they added characters to what people were already in love with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Really good formula. Mm. Oh, it's, 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 well, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'll be there. I'll, I'll be on the Kickstarter definitely with you. So do you, um, do you have a date that you're going to, you're planning on launching the Kickstarter? May 1st is when we're launching. Uh, I've reached out to a few YouTubers, uh, but I don't know. Hopefully, uh, people go see it and like it and mm. uh, go to support it. I think we have some pretty cool rewards and such, but if not, uh, we'll, we'll still make it. It'll just take a little bit longer. Mm. So can you give us a rough idea of what sort of what the rewards might be? Uh, we have a promotional artist, Jess uh, Egan. I'm sorry if I mispronounced her last name. And she's done a few thumbnails, uh, poster types. Those are going to go up as wallpapers, of course. Cool. Uh, then Aaron Weatherford's uh, comp composed tracks are going to form an original soundtrack that we're going to give away for downloads. And mostly, I didn't want to bloat this project. So a lot of the rewards are tied directly into the movie itself. So depending on if you want to donate, you can get your voice into your eyes flashbacks or get a spoken line in a memory or Tony will draw you in as a thunder warrior in a certain scene. Oh man, that's so, that, that is, that is amazing. Uh, you can probably hear the smile on my face right now. That yeah, that's, that's wicked. And that's the uh, goal because I, uh, I just, you know, if, if everyone's coming to the movie to support it, they, it's probably because they like the setting. So why not? Mm put the people that support it into the movie and mm. plus then you don't have to account for extra costs because we can do it all digitally we don't have to send people stuff don't have mm. to waste time yeah absolutely i mean who hasn't had the idea who who sort of hasn't put themselves in astartes armor you know or you know for the for the ladies maybe the uh, sister of battle or sister of silence or something like that yes that's the dream yeah, absolutely. Everybody, <laughs> everybody wants to be a monk in space. Kidding me? I'd love to be eight feet tall. Be yeah, beautiful. absolutely. Right, Tiber. So, do you want to uh, give us a plug for social medias or anything like that? Uh, 
my only plug would be, I guess, my YouTube channel, Todd Reporting is my name. But uh, I can send you a bunch of links to everyone else who's worked on the project. They deserve the attention a lot more than I do. Oh man, this is your idea. Abs abs absolutely, it, it's. I think it's at the very least equal. It really is. But no, um, I'll include links to everyone down below. Do you have a Twitter for this yet or anything like that? I do not as of now, but... Next job should. then. Who knows, yeah. Yeah, man, absolutely. Next job. Ma seriously, make a make a Twitter and, and as soon as it's up, I'll pop a link in the description and we'll be ready to go with that. Right, thank you so much, Don. Yeah, and I'll, I'll promote, we'll uh, get this, we'll... Uh, loud hail this across the internet as much as, much as possible because it's a it's a it's a really admirable goal making a video to showcase the law and especially in such a an unconventional fashion as you say you know so many of the videos are ultra detailed just battles this is the opposite in so many ways and it's beautiful yeah i think uh, the the strength in building the universe ultimately it, for longevity i guess will be in character moments and Hopefully, if this is successful, we can do more cool stuff like uh, tell, us, tell the stories of the Horus Heresy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That'd be wicked. That would be something special. I, I want a cameo in that if it happens. <laughs> oh, we, we got you. Don't worry. There, there's a lot more voice acting roles in those stories than in this one. Oh, yeah. So we got... We're going to need plenty of people. Hmm. That's very cool. Yeah, I, I'm... Man, I'm absolutely in awe of the work that's been done so far and the fact that it's... It's it's a this this is really is the definition of a passion project as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, well, uh, thank you. We uh, hope we're just happy to keep working on it, and we're happy people are excited about it like we are. Mm, mm. Thank you. Absolutely. Tell you what, I need to sit down with a beer and watch this a few more times to really get my head around it because it's ace. So I really look forward to seeing more. Thanks so much for coming on stream with me. Oh yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very, you're very welcome, man. This is this is wicked. Um, like I say, send me all the links, and the links will be appearing on the screen as we speak. And as soon as the Kickstarter is up, there will be links to that. So yeah. Otherwise, I'll speak to you again soon. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, Tiber. Have a good day. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. This is a brand new channel, and any support you can give would be highly appreciated. You're all truly wonderful. All hail the Omnisire, and I'll see you all soon. This is Tom, from the Law Lounge.